Brian, what has changed in the new view since this war began? Well, what's been remarkable is that the markets, at least risk assets, have really discounted, I think, the worst case scenario in the war, even as it continues to, to rage and escalate in many respects. But the, the big change we see is the pricing for the Fed and the rhetoric from the Fed itself. What's been really surprising is that we saw the war as primarily a channel into potentially lower growth globally, creating inefficiencies, leading to lower real disposable personal income growth, uh, not just in the U.S., but around the world. But markets seem to regard this as, in, as a primarily an inflation event. So we've had interest rates rise because inflation expectations are rising, and the Fed is adjusting its rhetoric and its policy path to accommodate that. So we're, we're preparing for tighter monetary policy, persistently higher uh, energy-driven inflation. And then I think by the end of the year, somewhat slower economic growth than we were anticipating pre-war. Brian, let's talk about that tighter monetary policy. This from Citi in the last hour from Andrew Hollenhorst and the team saying the following. The median Fed dot for appropriate policy rates at the end of 22 in the June summary of economic projections, they go on to say, may rise to around 3 percent from 175 to 2 percent. Brian, can you walk me through that, the prospect of getting the Fed funds rate to 3 by year end? It only took five days for the Fed to go from seven rate hikes to now all the speakers seem to think they're going to be going by 50 in May, which implies more than seven rate hikes total for this year. Um, Three percent to me feels like the outlier case. I know there's a couple of Fed presidents who maybe would like to get the three percent by the end of the year. Um, that would be a further hawkish surprise on top of what we've already seen. And I think you need to see a justification in the data. Um, the Fed, as, as, as sort of one directional that this has been, all just everybody pointing to higher rates as far as the eye can see, uh, um, I think that they're still data dependent in terms of the inflation numbers that come in, the employment data that we continue to see. If that points to wage price spiral, they may be hiking by more than what's currently priced in and what they're saying. But if it's not, if it looks like dur durable goods prices are rolling over, if the energy price shock doesn't last as long as we think it might, then I don't think the Fed's going to have to hike by as much. And that would be obviously a far better scenario for the markets. Does that create a buying opportunity in treasuries, particularly at the short end, Brian? I do think that if the curve steepens from here, it will be because short rates are coming down, not because long rates are coming up by a lot, because there's so much inflation baked into the cake. We've never seen inflation expectations this high. We've never seen the break-even curve this inverted. Short-term inflation expectations, two years, 5% per year over the next two years. Now, some of that's oil hedging, but some of that is genuine concern and needing to hedge inflation uh, by hook or by crook. So. When, when, if and when we start to see inflation roll over, I think you'll see the deflation in the rates happen primarily at the short end, and we could have a steeper yield curve. Again, I think that's a pretty bullish scenario for, for stocks, for credit, and obviously for short-term treasuries as well.